Tonight's 6 o'clock news will be a little different. We'll have the news of the day, but we'll also have some special tributes to Gary Waddell on his last 8 News Now newscast. Putting jobs first, Mitt Romney's message during a campaign stop in North Las Vegas and his response to allegations he didn't pay taxes for 10 years. Dead plants, dried up streams, and farmers out of work. A new government report outlining the environmental impact of a pipeline to rural Nevada and how it could hit you in the wallet. And this is Gary Waddell's final newscast at Channel 8. We have a few surprises and a candid interview you won't want to miss. Now, Nevada's first choice for news. This is Channel 8 News Now at 6. Thanks for joining us. A murder suspect shot by FBI agents has died. Shooting on Thursday happened in the parking lot of the Arizona Charlies on Boulder Highway. Surveillance team was tracking the suspect. The FBI says he displayed a gun during the arrest and the agent opened fire. Coroner's office has not released the suspect's name. Mitt Romney, the presumptive Republican nominee, slammed President Obama in an appearance in North Las Vegas today. Romney spoke to supporters at Sierra Truck, Body and Equipment, saying Obama's economic policies have made the economic crisis worse. Romney told the audience that Obama doesn't understand how the private sector works. Today, Staples employs roughly 90,000 people. And Solyndra, I think you know how many people it employs. Outside the event, Democratic protesters demanded that Romney release more of his tax returns. Senator Harry Reid's been pushing the tax controversy, claiming an anonymous source at Bain Capital tells him Romney hasn't paid taxes for 10 years. Romney told reporters today that he pays taxes every year and that Reid needs to put up or shut up and reveal who that anonymous source is. A new Bureau of Land Management report shows a proposed pipeline could cost you and the environment. The plan would siphon rural water and drop the water level in several areas by 10 feet. According to past reports commissioned by the Water Authority, the cost to residents could be $90 a month in fees. That does not include how much water you actually use. When the public and businesses get that bill, it's going to be it's going to be economic devastation. The Southern Nevada Water Authority says there's no other option and that even extreme conservation measures can't put a dent in the need for more water. Henderson issued its State of the Chamber address today. Business is reportedly on the uptick there, but fighting a fickle economy. Chamber said today what they said today was they have a call to action. They urge businesses to take advantage of their resources to keep growing and fueling the economy. A new urgent care facility, Doctors Express, says the city needs to help residents understand that they still deserve quality health care. They should not be lacking in a standard of care because they don't have an insurance policy, health insurance policy that is. So we want to create just a level playing board. You know, we're going to treat everyone the same. Stephanie Glankler says some people think they have, have to accept health, the health care they can get. She says the chamber is helping her change that perception. A discovery in St. George is providing opportunities and excitement. The paleontology department at Dixie State College is collaborating with artists to create a life-size sculpture of the meat-eating dinosaur, the Dilophosaurus. It's based on actual footprints found in the area. It should take another few weeks to finish painting the exhibit. Once it's done and the glass eyes are added, it will be moved over to where the preserve tracks are in the position the dinosaur was believed to have been walking in that very same spot. Time to check in now with Darren Miller. We got a weekend looking at us, Darren. What's it going to be like? Well, it still might be buggy out there. In fact, as long as we have these dew points in the mid 50s and 60s, there's always a chance for seeing some more scattered showers and thunderstorms. All right, the high today, normal high is 104, and right there at that number, the high today officially was 104. Now, the sunset will occur at 744. You can see the record 116 set back in 1979, the record low 54 set back in 1937. And tomorrow, as you wake up, sunrise will occur at 550. So it's still a little active out there. Again, a lot of fuel out there. Dew point still in the mid 50s. You got some cloud cover all the way up towards Caliente, some spotty showers there. And then look at southern and central Nye County getting pounded right now up near Beatty, all the way down towards Indian Springs and Pahrump. 
Again, we'll keep this in the forecast for the for chance for some more thunderstorms uh, tonight, tomorrow through Sunday, and then at some point next week, begin to dry things out. So at home tonight, we'll drop down to about what? Upper 70s, lower 80s, a slight chance for a couple scattered storms around. Uh, for tomorrow, looking pretty good with a high of 103, still partly cloudy and still a little muggy out there with a chance for a scattered thunderstorm, and then there's a look at the 70 forecast. So tomorrow and Sunday, a little muggy outside, still a couple storms around, and then all of next week, plenty of sunshine and temperatures above the 100 degree mark. There you go. Paul, back to you. Thanks, Darren. Well, for the rest of this newscast, we're going to take a walk down memory lane. Many in the community wanted to say goodbye to Gary. We'll have some of those well wishes and my one-on-one -on -one interview reflecting on his time here. Gary also gives his advice for those looking at a career in broadcast journalism. <laughs> and, a, like and a humorous <laughs> note, George Knapp tells us what it's been like being mistaken for Gary Waddell for three decades. You are synonymous with the word TV and news, and you will always be very much a part of our lives, and I certainly can speak for our family except for this former mayor and tell you we will miss you, and hopefully you'll do guest appearances. Yes, as the president of the chapter of the Hells Angels. <laughs> Gary, I just finished reading that wonderful book by Brinkley, Douglas Brinkley, on Walter Cronkite. You truly are Nevada's Walter Cronkite. You have been part of the scene there for as long as I've been in government, and you've done a wonderful job being fair and making such a good appearance, having that wonderful voice that I envy. I wish you the very, very best in the days to come. Gary and I sat down together to reflect on his time at Channel 8. We did. I tried to turn the tables on Paula, asking her about the first time we worked together. Watch this. When I started working with you, and of course I'm going to make myself cry, but I'm prepared for that. Oh, don't cry. Um, I say I to you steal into the were night. the big deal. The big deal. And for me to sit next to you, and for you to interact with me as though I was even remotely on your level was the greatest compliment you could pay me, and it has been so much fun. <laughs> well, that's very nice. That's nice of you to say. Uh, I never thought of myself that way. You give work meaning, and you make it fun. Well, yeah. Why did you start with this? Sorry. Uh, no, that's I all right. I'll move on. That's I'm ready right. to move on. No, no, and you're the big deal. I mean, you, you are too, you. And, and I never thought otherwise. We see from the world day the one, same I way. Never, but from day one, I never thought otherwise. Thanks. You know, I mean, when you sat down, you were this just. This interview were a is of mine. not about me, Gary. <laughs> no. Well, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Don't don't be turning the we, tables. I I'll know you'd I, rather. I, I got do a that. whole bunch of questions here. And we got a little time. So. I know you would rather do that. <laughs> <laughs> Gary would rather do anything than talk about himself. But we will air the long version of the interview, and that's not the best part, during a half-hour special this Sunday at 5.30. I thought that was pretty good. Well, I thought that was pretty okay. good. I grilled you a little bit You there. did. You did. You did. I thought that was pretty good. But on Sunday at 5.30, you'll already be on a motorcycle trip. I'll be so. out of here, so once again, I won't yeah. have to watch myself on television. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Incredible. I've made it. We'll be back with more of the interview after this. Gary, it's my pleasure to congratulate you on your retirement from KLAS-TV after 32 years. You've earned Southern Nevadans' trust, and I join them in wishing you the very best as you begin the next chapter of your story. Congratulations, Gary. KLAS-TV 8, Las Vegas, where news comes first. Now, Gary Waddell, George Knapp. This is Eyewitness News 8. President Reagan is resting at his California ranch tonight after having quite a day. Good evening, I'm Gary Waddell. And I'm George Knapp. And here they are. <laughs> Together again for the yes. first time. That was the dawn of history, wasn't it? Yeah, in those it days? was. It we was. called that the Mount Rushmore team because it was Dave Fox uh, and uh, Eric Randall and, and Gary and I, mm -hmm. yeah. four white guys, the Mount Rushmore newscast. <laughs> yep, looking down. There we, we were. believe yeah. women then. Uh, you know, we've been having a lot, a lot of tears around here today, but a lot of laughs, too. Yeah, and really I wish we could share with the folks at home what we've been laughing about, but I don't think, we, I don't <laughs> the, think the world's quite... The rest of us still need to work. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> have to work tomorrow, quite ready for that. You guys do. By the way, I don't know what you're Please doing do. here, Gary, but I'm in it's solidarity with you. By the way, Jeff, who called, this is it. We're not going any further than this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've been advocating They're this for a long their time. So. Um, <laughs> Sorry, ladies. As you saw from that taped uh, introduction there, uh, Gary and I were co-anchors years ago, uh, worked on the same newscast, and it, it has haunted me ever since. Um, basically, because everywhere I go, even, even, after I, uh, even after I grew the beard, 
people would call me Gary Waddell. It was a result of us being on the set together there. Everywhere I'd go, so I wrote this commentary back several years ago, both when, when both of us had a lot more color in our hair. Take a look. I can't remember the last time I went through an entire day without someone calling me Gary Waddell. In the big scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter that much, but it does make me wonder how closely you folks in TV land pay attention. Years ago, in the pre-beard era, Gary and I anchored the news together, so mistakes then might have been understandable. Once, when Gary and I were having dinner, a lady walked up to him, pointing, and said, You're Gary Waddell. And then she looked at me and said, And you are too. True story. It happens almost everywhere, at the grocery store, Hi, Gary. in the Taco Bell drive through line where I dine five times a week, Here's your change, Gary Waddell. And lately it's been happening to me even in the Channel 8 newsroom. Gary, how long is that street talk tonight? Gary, that I-team piece isn't in either. I'm now worried that it might spread to my home and family. Gary, you're home early. Hurry up, I've got dinner ready. Hi, Mom. It's me. Oh, is that you, Gary? Please take notes on this. Gary and I share the same first initial, but there are some obvious differences. He's the nice, clean-shaven guy whom you'd trust with your daughter on an overnight campout. No, no, and no. Gary rides Harleys. George can barely drive a car. Gary is respected and admired for his professionalism, a solid citizen. Ha! Perhaps there are some things I can do to distinguish between us. A Channel 8 tattoo on my face might do it. Or I could become the Dennis Rodman of TV news. Or maybe I could lose the hair altogether. Then again, maybe the station should exploit this situation, blur the line between the two of us so people think there are more Gary Waddells out there. Well, what the heck, why worry about this? As long as we both work in television, it's probably going to continue. Maybe someday, there may even be a bright side to it. All right, Mr. Waddell, I got you going 90 through the school zone, okay? So I need you to press hard, I got four copies for you. This is your court date, this court right here. Yeah, you got me fair and square, that's W-A-D-D. -D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a long time since I saw that. You can tell how long ago it was. I mean, that cop was Michael McDonald, That's who true. became a city councilman. <laughs> now right. he's the head of the state GOP. That was that was a while back there, oh. but you know, oh, wow. for a long time, it kind of got under my skin about people calling me <laughs> Gary, and then and then it kind of dawned on me that that's a good thing, you know, that if people think that I am uh, Gary Waddell, that's a compliment, yeah. and I should be flattered and not irritated. So. And I get the same thing, with, uh, George, and I am always flattered, George. I always am. It's been a heck of a week and a heck of a run, you know. It's been a lot of fun. It really has, you know. So it's, uh, you know, sitting sitting beside her and working with you has just been, just been amazing. So, um, yeah. We're lucky to be at Channel 8. I've been so lucky to work with both of you. Yeah. It doesn't get any better. No, it's it's been a lot of fun. It really yeah, there's has. a reason we stay around a long time. Yeah. That people stay around a long time. It's you know, not because we can't get other jobs. Nothing against the other stations either, but uh, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of turnover there, and there's a reason for that as well. Plus, nobody has as much news as Las Vegas does. That's true. Here's another elected official saying goodbye to Gary. Gary, I understand that you are retiring. I cannot tell you how that breaks my heart as a Nevada not to be able to see you every night. Best of luck to you. All my love. You take care. Welcome back to our tribute to Gary Waddell's last newscast at Channel 8. Yeah, this one knocked me over. This was uh, quite a surprise. What did this uh, morning? I had no clue. Gary was no. honored with his very own street. Tiny little letters, by the way, you'll see on this sign. Yeah, here I thought that up. was a bit. Uh, I wouldn't have chosen that font, actually. It would have been a little small. He, he helped uh, pull off this giant black cloth revealing Gary Waddell Way, and it uh, helped uh, remind us to try and uphold the values that Gary brought to our newsroom every day. There's the sign. That's pretty sure. cool. That That's is very nice. cool, yeah. Yeah, I won't see that every day when I don't drive in here anymore, you know? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see that. <laughs> Total surprise, though, right? You didn't know it was coming. No, right. I didn't know much of this was coming. <laughs> All uh, right. They managed to keep me in the dark over most of it. I just was, like, under that black cloth for a week. <laughs> well, we've got one more uh, clip from this interview. This is, uh, I asked Gary what he'll miss the most. Let's take a look at it. What will you miss about coming to work, if anything? Being in the middle of what's going on. You know, I changed when you and I stopped anchoring together all the time was when they when I moved to days yeah. and doing the noon and the and the four and the six for a while. Um, and I thought I would hate it because I did like the night shift. I really enjoyed it. And and I was on it for 20 some years. But uh, 
you know, the one thing I've liked about being on the day shift is that that's when things are happening. Yes. And that's when I can come out here and, and say, you know, here's what's going on, folks, and, and we've got this breaking news, and that's what's, that's what's happening. And, and that's been, you know, that's been really fun to do, and it's, and I feel like we make a difference to people when we do that. You know, I, I get it as often as anything else that uh, when bad things are happening, you and Paula, make me feel like it's going to be okay. I will miss I think that. that's the most important thing we do. I'll miss that. I will. Well, if you can yes, stand, I will. if you can stand any more of this, come back. We'll be right back. First, uh, Lawrence Weekly says goodbye. Uh, Gary, God bless you, man, and good luck in all of your future endeavors. And hopefully you won't go anywhere. You'll stay around Southern Nevada and stay involved and continue to be as genuine now as you've always been. Happy retirement, buddy. Love you, man. Dom? Ah, okay. A lot of Welcome blubbering back. and laughing going on. Yeah, a lot of giggling, <laughs> a lot of crying. We are uh, in our last segment with Gary's last newscast at 8 News Now. So here we are. I'm surrounded now by my first co-anchor, Gail Westrup. She came in specially from Sacramento for this. It's been a pleasure. I was thrilled oh, to have you. I, I was <laughs> so really I was just blown yeah. away when you walked in at noon. I had no <laughs> clue at all. It's it is so nice enjoy. to see you. And it was so much fun. I'm so glad you're doing um, well and all is good with you. Well, I'm just we congratulating just thank you back. to you. I, I no. told you at noon when you, you did a great job holding down the floor here. Know, yeah, well, we tried to keep the lights on since you left. You know, Paula's helped. George has helped us. So we've, oh, we've done great. all right that way. That's so great. thank you so awesome. much for coming down. We wish you the best. There are a lot of people out there who still remember you. <laughs> I, they ask me about they you still call me a lot. Gail once in a while. Yeah, that's right, absolutely. <laughs> that yeah. call, call me maybe. All right. Oh, good job. Ian, can you repeat what you just said to me? <laughs> no package. Let's just oh, okay. keep talking. So we can good, keep talking. Well, okay. So right. you're completely out of television. <laughs> yep. Up there in the real Except estate for today. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm expecting, my husband and I ride a motorcycle. Yeah, well. So we're expecting you to drive up I'll that come way up, and, and then anytime time you want to come down and anchor down here, I'm sure you're more than welcome to <laughs> yeah. come down, so. Uh, Did yeah. you meet Darren? Place. No, my husband yeah, is there. Nice oh, to meet you, by the way. There we go. Don't forget to be family. Why not? I just live studio audience. Yes, we have a live studio audience. It's phenomenal. I just want to say one more thing. When I first came to Las Vegas in 1971, I went to work for that other television station down the street, and my friend Tom Benozzi was running camera the day I was there, and he's running camera tonight. <laughs> Here. That's hey, amazing. Tom. So we bookended Syn this. Yeah. Well, synchronicity. So there he is. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's, that's pretty neat. Can so. you share with anyone what you're going to do? Well, I, you know, I'm going out of town on the motorcycle f for a little while, and then I'm going to figure out what else. Uh, I'm going to do some things, I think, for Channel 10. I may do some things for us occasionally, so uh, we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So thank you very much. <laughs> I'm New Year's so much trouble. Don't drink it all at once. <laughs> 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 I have to do this. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I was, I was just going to say. Darren, that's, okay. Like that's okay. That's <laughs> okay. I was just going to say a couple of things just to, to end with. Uh, you know, this is it. You guys, this is the last one regularly scheduled one where I will be here uh, talking to you. We've been sitting together for more years than both of us care to remember yeah, probably. It's been a while, but I just want to tell you what a blessing that's, you know, that's been after I'm gone. You know, people will come up to you and say, out in the world, I watch you and Gary every, I know. every night. That'll go on and I want you to continue to say that for as long as you can. So that will... Uh, that will be uh, that will be very good, and I will I will take that as a real compliment if people say that to you, George. It has been amazing. You are by far the best reporter I've ever met in my life. You could work for oh, thanks, man. any newspaper, magazine, television station, network in the country, and you choose us, and we are yeah. deeply honored for that. Well, so it's thank you. Just too darn much fun to go anywhere else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, you told me one time that you'd do this for nothing. Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if you had to make bills. So we'll mention yeah. that, Terry. If you're out there, you're listening. So anyhow, thank you very much, guys. Best of luck, Gary. Thank you. It's been Good it's luck. been a lot of fun. Have a blast, Mr. News. Have a blast. Thank right. you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Gary. Call me Gary.